So it was time to head out to the garden and see what was growing. And I saw a lot of dill. So it was getting cold and I wanted to go ahead and make sure I used this fresh dill before I lost it to several freezes. And so I gathered up some dill and I remembered one of my favorite ways to use this is in Swedish meatballs. Now most Swedish meatball dishes call for parsley. So if you don't have dill, feel free to use easy to find parsley. And then one of my favorite flavors in Swedish meatballs is allspice. So I have this little tree here and I thought it would be fun to use a few of the leaves in the gravy. So I gathered up some of those and then over to my little patch here of some scallions and I'm using one large scallion and of course those are easy to find at your grocery store if you don't have them growing in your garden. So I'll go ahead and put the ingredients right here for you. You are welcome to jot them down. Of course they'll be below the video if you'd like to print them out. And as always you can do a screenshot with your device. So for the meat, I am using ground chuck, pork, ground pork, and veal. Now, I went to the grocery store. They did not have ground chuck on sale, but they did have a chuck roast on sale. So I picked that up because I remembered I had this little meat grinder that I was given last year, and I thought, well, this will be great because the veal was also on sale. So I picked that up, and then the pork was already ground, and it was on sale. So that was great. So I had to, of course, take this extra step here and grind all this up myself. Now, I love this little um, kitchen appliance that I have been given, and I've been using it a lot. And I'll leave a link below the video if you'd like to learn more about it. It has all kind of different attachments, and it's really small. Now, I want to have really moist meatballs, and so that's why I'm using ground chuck and not a... Um, real lean ground beef, but I'm also using fresh bread, which is very important. So I am just bought some really good bread at the grocery store, making my own little breadcrumbs, again, with the same appliance. It has like a four different attachments, so this is my little food processor. And now I need to grind up some whole spices. I like to always grind up my allspice, cloves, and then grate my fresh nutmeg. It just seems like they stay fresher longer when I use whole spices. So that's what I try to do. And so I'll just put those aside and those are ready to go. And then just grate up a little bit of nutmeg. I minced my garlic and then with my dill, I'll go ahead and use these little dill stems in my meatballs, okay? And I'll put the leaves aside and minced up some onion and also went ahead and cut up the white and green parts of the scallion. So I'll start by just cooking down the onions a bit. This will be the regular onion and the scallions. Once those are nice and soft, I just cooked them, you know, in a little bit of butter. I'll go ahead and put those to the side to cool. And I need to separate my egg whites from my egg yolks. Now you will see me putting together a lot more ingredients than what I had listed for you, but that's only because I like to make a lot of these at one time because it does take time to make the meatballs and I like to freeze some so that I can use them later. So we'll go ahead and beat up these egg yolks and into my onion mixture goes the garlic and the dill stems that I minced up and we'll go ahead and mix those all up really nice together and in goes the black pepper along with the spices and the salt. Now for my breadcrumbs and I'll just mix all this up together until it's a nice fine mixture. Now my egg yolks into a bowl along with my milk and then add the sour cream. I also am going to put sour cream in the gravy. Okay, so we want to put this in the meatballs and also in the gravy. So like I mentioned, I'm making a lot of meatballs. So I'll go ahead and divide this into two bowls so it will be a little bit easier for me to work with. And also I need to add my pork to this. And with my fingers, I want to go ahead and make sure all this meat is mixed up really good together. And now I'll add my breadcrumb mixture and again go ahead and mix all this up really good together. And in goes my milk and egg and sour cream mixture. And we'll 
mix that up. You want it to be kind of um, wet, so make sure it's coming together nicely. Now that they are all mixed up really good, I'll just put them in one bowl here and in the fridge they go. So I pop those in the refrigerator for a few hours while I ran some errands and then it was time to, prep, to make dinner a little bit later that evening and so I want to make sure that when I make my meatballs that I wet my hands with water first and then I'll just kind of cup my hands together and roll them out. We want to make sure we get them nice and smooth. Take your time doing this and then it'll be a nice little meatball. So most recipes that I've seen for Swedish meatballs, and actually I've done it myself in the past, is you fry your meatballs in butter, but I actually want to use oil for this, and that, they turned out really good. So I'm just using some safflower oil, and we'll just flip them over once they start to get a little bit of color on them. Now if they are sticking a little bit and they're showing some resistance, don't fight with them. Just leave them there for another minute or two until they turn over real easy okay and this should take probably about 10 minutes maybe um, about five minutes on each side we just, we just want to brown them up real nice and then once they're nice and brown go ahead and set them aside and we're going to get our gravy ready so i went ahead i put those in an oven to stay warm at around 250 degrees fahrenheit so I set all the oil behind. I'm not going to use that to make my gravy. Maybe just a tiny bit, but not all of it for sure. And now in my pan, I just poured a little bit. I think I used actually white wine in here because that was all I had, but you can use water. You just want to kind of loosen up all of the wonderful goodness that was left behind from the meatballs there. So I let that liquid reduce a little bit and then added my butter. I'm on about medium low heat and then I added two tablespoons of the oil that I cooked the meatballs in. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and mix all this up together till it's nice and bubbly and then we'll sift in the flour. And this is just an all-purpose flour. So we'll go ahead and mix all this in. Again, I'm on about medium low heat and I like this little whisk. This is a sauce slash gravy whisk and I really like it. It gets into the corner of the pan where I need it to be so that especially when I'm working with a large skillet like this. So we'll just go ahead and make sure we get up all of the goodness and then in goes my white pepper. And now I can start to add my beef broth after I've cooked that flour, you know, a little while, about two or three minutes. And we'll just slowly add in the beef broth. And then just continue to add it. Um, it will thicken as you add it. Now for the Worcestershire sauce, and I want to taste it for salt. It definitely needed a little salt, but don't taste before you add the Worcestershire sauce, okay? And now for my allspice leaves. Now allspice leaves do not hold flavor when they're dry. So obviously this is an optional item. I know everyone does not have an allspice tree growing in their yard, so certainly skip it. I just thought it would be fun to add it. And I let these cook in the gravy for about five to 10 minutes until they were wilted and soft. I also went ahead and tasted again for salt. So I put the other allspice leaf in the water. I was gonna cook my egg noodles in. You can serve these Swedish meatballs with mashed potatoes too. That would be really good. And now I want to make sure that my meatballs are nice and done. You do not have to worry about overcooking these meatballs because I've used ground chuck and I've got fresh bread in there with the sour cream. They're really moist. And now my noodles are done. I was draining them, so now it's time to add my sour cream to the gravy. And 
It was smelling so good. I was just couldn't wait to eat these. Like I said, I only make them every couple of years, but they're always so good when I make them. So, and now here is the dill. We'll just go ahead and add that. And we are just about there. I want to stir the dill in just a little bit. We'll put some more fresh dill right there on top. So save just a little bit for the end. And now add my egg noodles right here to the gravy and meatballs. And there we go. Now you can certainly just spoon it over your egg noodles if you want, don't want to mix it all in but this just makes it easy just to serve it kind of family style and there we go and I want to put just a tiny bit more dill on top and then look at that meatball how moist it is I don't even have to push on it at all just barely touch it with my fork and there you go. Now that is so delicious. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys can try this very soon. And then after we all enjoyed our dinner, I had to get over there and finish up the rest of the meatballs. I think I ended up with about 36. <laughs> I think I had about five or six pounds of meat total. So I just fried them up over there on my stove and just some more oil. Made sure they were nice and brown all over and let them cool. I vacuum sealed them and popped them right in my freezer for later. So if you'd like some more ideas for other recipes, please feel free to head on over to my channel where I have a whole playlist section. There's something over there for everybody. And just a reminder, make sure you click that bell off to the right of the subscribe button and you'll receive all notifications for my channel. My videos do not go out to all of my subscribers, so make sure you click that bell so you'll be notified of new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.